Hi, my name is Nick Stasoulis and I am a hydrologic technician with the main office of the New England Water Science Center. In this screencast, I will discuss how you can identify site interference with the Stream Pro in Section by Section Pro. A recent evaluation of Stream Pro data collected throughout the USGS indicated that the Stream Pro is susceptible to electromagnetic interference at some sites, more than other ADCPs. The StreamPro ADCP is more susceptible to EMI because the transducer is separated from the electronics by a cable. Think of this cable as an antenna, and the longer the cable is, the more potentially susceptible the unit is to interference. While we believe that this problem is mostly confined to StreamPro ADCPs, it is conceivable that other ADCPs may experience the problem. First, let's discuss the interference itself. This interference is due to sources specific to a site or measuring section. So, just because a unit experiences interference at one site or one measurement cross-section doesn't mean it would absolutely experience interference at another site or in a different cross-section at the same site. Also, sites with a low backscatter condition are more susceptible to interference as the EMI can more easily overwhelm the returns of the true signal transmitted by the ADCP. The cause of this interference is site-specific electromagnetic interference, or EMI. EMI sources could include television, AM, FM, and satellite transmissions, solar magnetic storms, lightning, power transmission lines, airport radar, railroad and mass transit infrastructure, and several others not listed here. Now, let's talk about how to identify interference in the Section by Section Pro software. First, interference usually causes erroneous or very odd looking data, particularly unusual patterns that change with depth, and using the simple review steps outlined in an earlier screencast should help identify situations where interference exists. This is a pretty classic example of a measurement with interference. First, notice how there is a very clear increase in velocities vertically in the contour plot. Velocities at the bottom are much slower than velocities at the surface. Next, notice the velocity profile for this ice measurement appears to be non-standard. Intensity values look reasonable, but switching to correlation shows an increase with depth, which is not what we would expect in a normal measurement. Another sign of interference could be high error velocities. And in this case, they are fairly consistent in the contour plot, with only a few outliers. The most telling sign that interference is possible is the PT3 test, collected as part of the ADCP test. In this case, viewing the ADCP test shows correlation values that stay nearly the same over some number of lags. In normal conditions, the correlation values in all four beams would decrease to 15 or so by about lag 3 and remain low. If interference is expected, you can't rely on one of these checks alone. You have to evaluate each and determine if interference is likely. In this case, we have an oddly shaped velocity profile vertically, unexpected correlation values, and a non-standard PT3 test result, though our error velocities look reasonable. If you identify interference, you may be able to use water up and water error thresholds to remove the erroneous data. But this may screen out too much data to allow the measurement to be used. Your best option is likely to try moving a substantial distance to a different measurement section or switch instruments. As of spring 2015, TRDI is working on a hardware solution to help minimize this issue. If you have questionable data, consider consulting with the USGS Hydroacoustics Workgroup using the email address shown.